Hey, this is Steve with Data Lab. So in this video, I'm gonna just talk generally about some Node topics and um, ho hopefully uh, for, for people that are new to Node or um, new to, to programming altogether, this will be helpful. And I'm gonna do this in the, the context of developing Alexa skills. Kind of occurred to me, um, I've posted some tutorials on building Alexa skills and they're all in Node, but I really haven't talked about Node and a lot of the questions that I've been getting are really more Node questions than um, Alexa questions. So I, I thought I would try doing a, like a, maybe a few videos that are sort of introductory stuff on Node. And this is the first one. And the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is the asynchronous nature of Node, because this, if you're, you're not uh, familiar with how Node works, can be really frustrating, especially when you're trying to debug an Alexa skill. And the best way for me to, to, to describe what's going on is just to, to show you. So um, I'm going to use an example that um, basically is going to um, show you what I'm talking about here. So I'm, I've just got some code here that's going to write to the, the council. Uh, three things. And, and, and incidentally, Node is not a programming language in, in case I'm, I'm assuming you're probably familiar with that, but just in case, Node is not a programming language, it's a runtime environment. The programming language is JavaScript. So uh, historically, JavaScript has been used in the browser and uh, used on web pages, and Node is um, typically used to run JavaScript on the server. So JavaScript is a, is a robust programming language. It can do everything that most of the other programming languages can do, uh, and now not just in the browser, but also on the server. And I say now, it's been around for a little while. I think it was 2009-ish or something like that when it uh, was first introduced. But um, anyhow, uh, this, this line of, uh, or this script here, if I run it, um, so node uh, example 0.js, it's going to do what uh, we would expect. So it's writing out one, two, three. And if you're from a, um, an, another, if your background is with a programming language that is a more synchronous programming language, you'd say, yeah, that makes sense because um, after one finishes up, then it's going to write two. And after two finishes up, then it's going to write three. And it looks like that with this example, because all of these are pretty simple operations. But if any one of these was going to take more time. Let me show you what happens. Um, and what I'm doing here is not really important um, for right now, but uh, I'm just going to wrap this in a little bit of code that is going to delay the execution by a thousand milliseconds or one second. And I want to show you what happens now. So now if I run the same code here, look at what happens now we get if you look at the output we get one three two and this is or can be confusing depending on the the programming language that you're used to because you might be thinking well the way that it should work is uh first this number one gets logged and then number two is going to be delayed for a second but it'll hang there for a second then it'll write number two and then number three that's not the case in Node. So the default in Node is that everything is running asynchronously, which means that number one runs and then number two starts running, but it just continues on and then number three is run. So when this finishes up, the script will finish up, but that'll happen last. And this can be an issue when you're developing, uh, if you're not familiar with it, this can be an issue when you're developing Alexa skills. Because if you've got in one of your uh, Lambda functions, if you've got code that is maybe calling an API or something like that, and you need the values of the API to use in your speech output, and you're not familiar with how it works, you might encounter the uh, undefined uh, uh, message a lot. And I get this, um, I get this question uh, quite a bit, so that, that's part of why I want to um, go through it here. Um, so let me let me try to illustrate it in a um, in a more real world example. So if we were to change this up a bit, and um, we'll just do like uh, uh, say something. So I'm turning this into a function now. So rather than just code running inside a script, we'll make this a function, and then we'll execute this function like this. So now the same thing's gonna happen. The only difference is um, 
this uh, line 11 is going to call this function here, and then it's going to um, run our uh, results of that function. So it's doing the same thing. But if this were a function that was going to return something that I was going to use in, in uh, speech output, let's um, let's do that. Let's do like um, name equal world. So if this is a hello world skill, then we would say hello and uh, then use the value of name to equal world. But let's say that's the default, but we want to call an API and we want to grab the name of a person maybe and insert that. And the API call is going to take a little bit to run. So we're going to go in here and we're going to set this um, name value to, and I'll set it to my name, to Steve, right? And um, yeah, we'll do that. So now if you, if you look at this function, you would think, and we're gonna return, turn name, okay. Now if you look at this function, you would think, okay, um, this should return Steve, right? So let's um, let's give it a try. We'll do, uh, oops, let's get rid of all this stuff here. We will log, um, say something here and see what happens. So what's going on, it is logging world. Why didn't the um, this Steve value get written to the name, or the Steve value get written to the name uh, variable? And same thing that we saw before, it's because this returned before this was finished up. And so what we need to do is we need a way of basically waiting for this stuff to finish up and then returning what we want and passing it back into wherever we want to use it so that uh, we can manage the, uh, the output the way that we want it. And the way that that works is with callbacks. And so um, now that you know kind of how Node operates, the, the, uh, the asynchronous uh, programming model, the, uh, the next thing to know is how to work with that. And there's different ways you can go at it. And I'm going to show you one in this video, just the kind of the, the most basic way to go at it with a, a callback. There are also promises and um, async and await in uh, the later versions of Node. And I'll talk about those in a future video. But for this right now, I just want to show you how, uh, how you would deal with this. So JavaScript, when you're working with functions in JavaScript, you can pass functions in as parameters into another function, which is not the case in, in some other languages. So if you're, uh, you're coming from another language or that doesn't support this, or if um, you're not familiar with JavaScript, this might seem strange to you. And uh, it, can, it can get strange fast. So let me show you a simple example. So the, by convention, normally, uh, what you're calling the function that you're passing in that you're going to get values back from is the callback function. So you name it callback. You don't have to, but this is kind of the, the convention. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass a function into the function that we're calling. This function that we're calling is going to return that function with a value, and then we're going to use that value uh, wherever we need it. So let me show you because it's probably easier to show you than it is to, to talk about it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to return this callback function, but I'm going to return the callback function after this set timeout finishes up. So I'm going to get rid of this here and I'm going to move into here and say um, return callback. Uh, so I'm returning a function. So functions can be passed in and out of functions. And that's what we're doing right now. And uh, also by convention, normally when you're returning a callback, you will always have a, an initial parameter that is going to be for errors. And in this case, I'm not returning an error. So I'm just going to return null. And then your data would be the, uh, the next parameter normally. So here for the data, I'm gonna return the, the value of the name. 
So now I've got um, I've got a function that is taking in a callback function and then returning that callback function with values and uh, in this case two parameters a null value because we don't have any errors and then the the name parameter which is going to contain the the value Steve. So now I've got to go down here and I've got to update this so that I can use it. So I'm passing a function in that is going to be executed down here when all of this stuff is done. And the way that I'm going to do that, actually, there's a, a few different ways you can do it. Um, but to keep this simple, I'm going to show you the most common, or at least the way that I like best. So I don't know if it's the most common. But I use um, arrow functions, or I like arrow functions, and that's what I'm uh, doing right now. So this is kind of a shortcut to uh, writing a function in uh, in Node to, to pass in. So it just uh, save, saves a little typing. But I'm defining the uh, the parameters or, or the uh, parameter names that I want to get out. Like I want this error uh, var variable, and I want data uh, coming out, and I want to use those inside of this. So then I would just actually I'm going to log inside of this. I can get rid of this now. So change this up a little bit. So now I'm going to call that function, and then I'm going to log um, data. So I'm going to log what. The, uh, the this parameter, the value of this parameter, which, which should be Steve. And I'll show you that. Let's see. So now if I run this, so now you can see it returns the value that I want, Steve. And um, this is a, a really simple example, but hopefully, hopefully it's helpful because this is a pattern that is going to be throughout almost everything that you're doing in Node and uh, going to be really um, important for you to understand as you're building uh, skills for Amazon Alexa, especially more complex skills, because you're going to be uh, very likely calling databases and APIs and all sorts of other stuff that's going to take a while to finish up. And this general concept here is key to making all that work and not going uh, batty as you're trying to, to debug it. So that's it for this video. Hopefully that was helpful in um, some future videos. I'm going to talk about uh, how to manage asynchronous calls that are a little bit more complex uh, calling apis i'll show, show some real examples and stuff like that if you if you have any questions or thoughts or topics that you'd uh, like me to um to to touch on or possibly make a video about please leave those in the comments and if you're not subscribed to the Dabble lab channel please subscribe thanks so much hope this was helpful